thank God so much for today and just thank him that we have restarted again our you know fellowship here at the River of Life. And we thank him for the beautiful summer that he has given us. I still feel we're still enjoying the summer. It's not yet ended, but we thank him anyway. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. It's 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 like it's still going on. The summer is still going on, but we thank him that now we can come back here and start again as usual. And I've been looking forward to this. I've really been looking forward to this, getting back in the Word, uh, growing in the Word, uh, focusing on the Word, allowing the Word to change us. And we just shared this scripture in Hebrews 4.12 that speaks about the power of the Word, how it is living, it is active, it is sharper than any two-edged sword, and how it pierces to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow and it discerns the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This is deep. This really shows that God has sent his word to also build us up. He has sent his word to do a work in us. Amen. He wants us to develop in him. He wants to equip us. In uh, the book of Timothy, Chapter 3, verse 16, I will also read that for us. Because it says in the book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture, all scripture is inspired by God. And it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So there's a purpose with the Word of God. It is there to train us, but not only to train us, even to correct us. It is there to teach us. It is for correction, for reproof. You see, sometimes I believe as Christians, we, we begin to um, forget that sometimes the Word is there to correct us. Okay? God knows that we're not there yet. We're not there yet. There's so many things he's still doing in us in order to train us that we may be complete and we may be equipped for every good work. There's a lot of work he wants us to do, but we need to be fully equipped for it. So there's a training going on all the time. With me, there's, I'm very aware of the training that goes on with me and the Word because sometimes I may think something a certain way and say and actually think that's what the word means and God he will correct me immediately because when I go to the scriptures I will see he'll give me the, 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 the correct understanding of it immediately it's almost like he's also interested in working with me because he knows I'm easy to work with I will immediately recognize it and get corrected and know, okay, this was not how God saw it, and this is exactly the correct way in the Word of God. And I'm saying this because I want all of us to be open to this constant teaching and training that takes place by the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? There's so many things He wants to show us in His Word. The reason He says it in Timothy 3.16 is that we may be fully equipped. We may be fully equipped, not just equipped halfway, not just equipped a little bit, because sometimes people settle in being equipped a little bit. And they're not fully equipped in the things of God. They're not fully equipped for that work which God has called them to do. But God is wanting us fully equipped for it. And therefore, He wants to train us, He wants to teach us, He wants to correct us, and we should be open for all of it. Amen. We should be open for all of it. And I think this is like very, very important for us because how God wants to use us, I believe it's at a higher level, because of the times we're living in, we need to be fully equipped. Okay? Each one of us, in whatever way God is using us, we need to be fully equipped. Um, if, for example, if I just give an example with Rachel, you need to be fully equipped for the gymnasium, okay? 
You need to be fully equipped for that environment. To know how to handle it, to know how to tackle it, to know how to remain strong and to remain who you are in the midst of it. Okay? So you, then God, He will equip you for that. And then He will equip me for whatever things and wherever He sends me, in whatever I do. Then He needs me fully equipped in those areas. So He will give me all of the information I need. And if I have wrong information, He will correct me. He will show me in the Word what is exactly His way. Amen. Now, there's an example here I want to show you in the, in the book of Acts that I think is, is, is a good example. And I think it, it is just good for us to see an example of a person who, who received Jesus, said yes to him, got baptized, but had not really changed in his ways. Okay? He had not yet changed in his way, so there was yet a work to be done inside of him. There was yet a work to be done. And this person in the scriptures, I believe, is put here for all of us as an example. So all of us are constantly checking ourselves and asking ourselves, Father, is there something in me that I'm still carrying around that I need to let go of? Is there a certain mentality that I still have that, I, that you don't need? In the, in the work that you have prepared for me? Is there something about my personality that needs to change in order that I could be fully equipped for the work that you have ahead of me? Or just for me as a Christian, the person that I am as a Christian today, maybe there's certain things inside of me that don't work anymore and God is wanting it out. So we're going to look at the life of a man and his name was Simon. This is uh, Acts chapter 8, and I will start, it's from verse 4, I'll be uh, referring to and all the way to verse 24. And I will just tell this story because this is now very long for me to read, okay? But it's, it talks about, this is a time where like uh, there was persecution for the church. They had just killed um, the very first martyr. His name was Stephen, okay? This is in the book of Acts. And, and Stephen, the, he had been stoned, okay? He had been stoned because he believed in Jesus and all of this, and the people were very angry at him and thought he was preaching a whole other gospel. So they, they stoned him and they put him at the feet of Saul. That, that he brought the clothes and everything at the feet of Saul. But now the part I want us to talk about is the, the, the persecution that resulted after this. Uh, people started going after the Christians and really attacking them and um, many of them began to flee. And Philip, one of the deacons, he, he went down to the city of Samaria, okay? So he ran away from that place. He ran all the way to the, down to the city of Samaria. And that is where he began to proclaim about Jesus Christ. He began to tell the people in the city about Jesus Christ. And it was so powerful how he was telling them about Jesus Christ that people began to turn away from what they used to believe in. But the Bible says there was a man and his name was Simon. And this man called Simon, he was also a very powerful man in the city of Samaria. Powerful in the way that he had some powers actually. And, and the Bible refers to it as magic, but he was very strong. He he had some uh, he had some abilities, some spiritual abilities that people were impressed with. Okay, this man called Simon, and um, Philip Philip comes with this new power. Okay, which is even stronger than what Simon had, and and Philip. The Bible says that when he prayed for people, evil spirits came out of them. And then miracles were happening. And people were being healed. And this surprised the people. They had never seen this kind of thing before. So they turned their hearts toward Jesus, who uh, Philip was preaching about. They turned their hearts and they believed in Jesus. And they actually wanted to be baptized. And they were baptized. And then the Bible says that even the Simon, he was so impressed 
with this new power that Philip came with, that he also believed in Jesus and he gave his life uh, to Jesus Christ and he was baptized and he began to go with Philip. Actually, he was very close. He was with Philip. The Bible says that um, he devoted himself constantly to Philip. That means that he he really started uh, following Philip and, and uh, supporting Philip and being with Philip. And so you could see that he wanted this new change, this new life. But the Bible says that um, now the apostles all the way in Jerusalem, Philip was not an apostle, he was a deacon. The apostles heard about this great work that was being done in Samaria. So they sent two of the apostles, and they, the two apostles they sent was Peter and John. Because now they wanted to, um, to release the Holy Spirit upon the lives of all the people who had been baptized in the name of Jesus. And this authority was with the apostles, okay? So they were sent down there now to release this Holy Spirit with the laying on of hands. And the Bible says that, so when they came, they released the Holy Spirit, they laid their hands on every person, everyone, and then this power came upon the people. And the Bible says that Simon, he was... He was so impressed by this, okay? And you know the next thing that Simon did? Simon said, Grant me this power and authority, so that whoever I place my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But he gave money. So he thought it was something that you could buy. So he gives money to the apostles, Peter and John, and says, Please, Help me get the same power that you have upon my life. So that, uh, and this authority, because it was authority, okay? This to release the Holy Spirit on the life of a person, that is authority. And he wanted this authority. He wanted this power. So he, he gave them money and he said, help me, let me get it also. And they looked at him and they said, and this is now verse 20 of chapter 8, it says, but Peter said to him, destruction overtake your money and you. And now, of course, Peter is, is upset. So he says, destruction overtake your money and you, because you imagined you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is all wrong in God's sight. So... Peter now addresses the, the root of the situation. It was the heart. The heart of Simon had not fully changed. Okay? I think Simon, the thing with Simon was that he loved the power. He loved the authority. He loved, because the Bible first describes him as somebody who had a lot of power in the city. He was somebody who loved a lot of authority in the city. He was somebody who loved to be recognized. So Simon, he had not fully let go of some old things that used to drive him before. He had not fully let go of it. And this reminds me of a scripture that Jesus said to us. Jesus says that we should be careful that when we have been delivered and the Spirit has gone out of us, we have been delivered. He says that if we leave the place empty, that Spirit comes back to check in its old home. And, to, and when it finds it empty, it comes back in and it brings even seven more demons stronger than uh, before. And then it occupies that space all over again. And I really think this was what was happening with Simon. I think that what was happening was that he had been delivered, he had received Jesus, he had been baptized, but an old thing, an old spirit that once occupied him just came wandering back to find out, is my old home empty? Okay? So I'm sharing this with all of us because I know that all of us have a past. All of us. All of us have a past. And all of us have things which used, 
we used to be comfortable in, in the past, okay? And those things that we used to be comfortable with in the past can be attached to spirits. And these spirits, maybe every once in a while they come back and check, is my old home empty or is it full? And this is where we have to watch. Because each of us have certain areas where we had a weakness in the past. And those are the, especially those areas we need to watch very, very much. Those places where we have had a weakness in the past, those are the places where we must put a guard, watch those areas, and not allow the enemy to come drifting back. Because if we're not watching that area, he can just step in, sit back in his old home, the enemy, and feel very comfortable there. And cause us to start going the wrong direction without even knowing it. Uh, the Simon here, what was... Uh, what he liked, he liked power, he liked authority, he liked being recognized, he liked having influence, and all of this is good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's good to have influence, it's good and all of that. But the motive, the motive, why did he want it? You see, he had the wrong motive. He had the wrong motive. It was to exalt himself. It was not to exalt God. It was, Simon did not want to exalt God with this authority. And that's why Peter rebuked him. And that's why Peter told him, you know, your money and, your, and whatever it is, let it all be destroyed. Let destruction come upon it. And then later on, um, he tells him, repent. This is what Peter tells him. And then later you'll see Simon asking for forgiveness and saying, don't, you know, I pray that these things you're saying don't come upon me. And I think he recognizes his faults at that moment. Okay? But this is just important for all of us because if, if for example, you used to be a manipulator in your past, if it was very easy for you to manipulate or to tell lies or to... Then maybe it just comes quite easy, those kind of things, you know? And even while you're in the kingdom of God and can be used by God, maybe the enemy can just try to wiggle in and use that old door and old thing that you used to be connected with and try to influence you while you are baptized and you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. So these are things we need to guard. These are things we need to be careful. And especially because of the times we are living in, especially because of the times we're living in. We really want our light, the light that Jesus, you know, has given us, to be very clear. A light that carries no darkness inside of it is not mingled with darkness, but it's just the light of Jesus shining freely from us, okay? So then it becomes important for us to also guard the different areas of our lives, Especially areas where we know we had weaknesses in the past and Jesus has delivered us from those things. Or even allow ourselves, as we are having our daily fellowship with Jesus Christ in the Word of God, allow Him to show areas, show us things about us. We just sang this song that says, shine your light on me, shine your light on me, shine your light on me. When Jesus' light is shining on your life, it begins to reveal certain things about you. I have had such beautiful moments of um, fellowship with the Lord where He has shown me things about my life. I say they are beautiful because I'm telling you it is beautiful to, uh, for the light of Jesus to expose who the real you is. Because it's things which maybe you never saw about yourself and you never knew about yourself, and the more the light of Jesus shines on you, it just exposes them, and then you can confess them, you can repent of them, and then you can move on with your life. This is beautiful fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ, that you can allow Him to do a deep work in your life and expose to you the things in your life that need to be exposed. This is, is, is beautiful fellowship. It is nice to be able to have a Savior who can reveal things to you that nobody else can see and you yourself cannot see. But He, the Savior, our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, He can see them because His light is so bright. And it just 
shines on you and he says, look, this part about you, this way, the way you do this right here, mm -mm. let go of it, <laughs> let go of it. And that you're also open and willing and you say, Father, thank you so much. Thank you for this, you know. I can only describe it like, it is almost like a weight being lifted off of you. You know, it's like a weight being rolled off of your life, being rolled off. The closer you come to him, the brighter his light shines, and the more the things that need to be exposed are being exposed. And of course he exposes them not so that we can just look at them and walk away and forget about them, but we can look at them and do something about them. Okay? The Bible says that he corrects us because he loves us. Every parent that loves his child will correct his child. That's just how it is. Correction does not come because God hates us or he's trying to put you on the spotlight or he's trying to say, hey, look at you, look what you're doing. It's nothing about that. It's because you have a loving father that cares for you, that loves you so much, and he's just wanting the best out of you. He's wanting the best out of you. And so he will point these things out and say, look, my child, you don't need this little thing here because it's destroying you. It's not doing anything for you. It has nothing good for you. Let it go. Let it go because I have something better for you. You know, so correction comes because of love. Correction comes because he's a father and we're his children. And when we realize really that I am his child, I am his daughter, I am his son, when you realize and you have that real father-child relationship, you will be willing to be corrected. You will be willing to be taught. In fact, you will want it. You will want it. You know? You will want it because you want to be more like him. Amen. He wants this for us. He wants more for us. Because he wants us living that victorious life that he already paid for. He already paid for it. It is ours. And if we don't have it yet, then there's a process to, to reach it. And that process is called, as the book of Timothy says, it is called teaching, reproof, correction, training, righteousness amen so it is a deep work that the Holy Spirit does in us continuously it is a deep work Jesus is doing for us that we may actually fulfill our purpose here on the earth amen so this is the beauty of it but this is a very good example that we see in the scripture of a man who was actually baptized had given his life to Jesus Yet, the transformation had not fully taken place in his attitude, in his thoughts, in his ways, okay? He had a new spirit, praise God for that, but his thoughts still needed to be worked with. His attitude still needed to be worked with. His character still needed to be built. There was a work that needed to be done. Because now he was dragging his old way into the new and it could not work together. And the apostles, they just saw it like this. They saw it so clearly. So they rebuked him. Because they were so filled with the Spirit of God. You see? By the time they can lay their hands and release the Spirit of God, means they're so filled with it. So filled with the Spirit of God. So they can see through anything. So the Spirit of God saw that in the heart of Simon, there was something that was not right. It was a wrong motive. He wanted to use it for his own gain. He wanted to use it for his own, uh, you know, fame. The fame that he had before Philip came into Samaria. Because the Bible says he had a lot of fame. The Bible says he was known in, in the town of Samaria. He wanted that again. But God didn't want that. Not with that wrong attitude. Amen. God will exalt us in his own time. But he needs us having the right heart, right motive, right attitude, and being on the right course. I really pray that this message has blessed you and, um, and that this message prepares you, prepares all of us for the things ahead of us, 
for the things God wants to do with us. He wants us fully equipped. He wants us strong, but he wants us also in full alignment with his ways, with his will, with his purpose for our lives. Amen. So this is a lot I have shared and we will post the teaching on the website just to hear it again, in case you need to hear it again. We'll put it on the website so you can have access to it, you can hear it again, you can be blessed by it. And um, I just want to conclude with a prayer for all of us, if we can all stand up. I want to pray for us that if there's anything in our motives, in our hearts, that God needs to make right, that he would make it right, that he would show it to us, he would shine his light upon our lives. If there's anything, anything from the old that we still are dragging into the new life that Jesus Christ has given us, that God would expose it with the light of Jesus Christ. Even now, Father, we say thank you. We say thank you for your word. We thank you because your word is fully active and it is alive even right now. And it is doing a work in each of our hearts. It is doing a work, a deep work, so that we are fully equipped for all of the good work that you have called and created us for. And we say thank you, Father, for this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the light of Jesus Christ. The light of Jesus Christ that exposes everything about us. We are asking, Father, that if there's anything in our way that is not right before you, that you would have mercy on us and you would forgive us in the name of Jesus. If we have strayed at any time, oh God, if we have gone in the wrong direction, if we have had wrong motives, wrong intentions, we ask for forgiveness, almighty God. We ask for you to forgive us and to have mercy and to wash us afresh with the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, for the things which we are not even aware of, ways which we are not aware of, I pray that your light would expose them in the name of Jesus. Your light would shine so strong upon us that it would show us areas of our lives that we need to lay down at the feet of Jesus and repent of and turn away from in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will help us to be obedient to you and to your ways, to be teachable, and to receive the word with meekness in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Almighty God, for the finished work at the cross of Calvary, and that it is fully sufficient for us to live out the life that you paid for, for us to live here on the earth. So Father, we want to work together with you and with your Holy Spirit as you continue to do and complete the good work that you have started inside of us. For your word declares, Father, that you will complete the good work that you have started in each and every one of us. Lord, I pray this for every person that is in this room right now, and for every person that is watching this program. I pray that in the name of Jesus, the good work you have started in each of us will be completed, and that none of us will fall away in the name of Jesus. But instead, O oh God, we will move from glory to glory, as your word declares, O oh Father. And we say thank you for this, Almighty God. Let every word that we have received today, every impression that comes from you today, let it indeed sit in us and bear forth a good harvest, a rich harvest, a hundredfold in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Let it not be robbed from us or stolen from us. And we say thank you for this, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you because you're faithful. Thank you because you're faithful, Father God. Thank you for your amazing love and abundant love. We say thank you, Father, and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.